So let's connect the power adapter and then check the 3 volt, 5 volt circuit. Let's put the black probe of the multimeter in the ground and check these two inductors. Here we have 5 volts and in the second inductor 3.3 volts. We have 3.3 volts in the electrolytic capacitor and also in the test point or the pad 3.3 volts. The same for this channel. We have 5 volts in the inductor, 5 volts in the electrolytic capacitor, and of course we should find 5 volts in the test point or the pad. Let's connect the power adapter. Oops, we have a problem. We have a short circuit here. Once we connect to plug, the LEDs turned off, means we have a short circuit. And we have the V in means adapter power supply, 90 volt. It could be 20 volt, but usually 90 volt. So B plus, when you find B plus in the schematic means the AC or battery power rail for power circuit. So plus CPU core means the core voltage for the CPU or the processor. 1.5 volt switched power rail for EGP interface. So this power is for the graphic cards. Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to track voltages in a dead motherboard using the multimeter and the circuit diagram. I'm going also to teach you how to find a short circuit and solve it. So let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram, as you can see here we have the DC jack, as you can see, okay? The 19 volt will go directly past through the thermal capacitors and then goes to Q1002 and then goes directly until we get here plus V part. This plus V part will be distributed to the whole motherboard, to all circuit in the motherboard. Basically, this plus V part is missing. We should find the field component. So let's connect the adapter once again. So the adapter is inserted, is connected to the motherboard. So we're gonna put, of course, the black probe of the multimeter in the ground, everywhere in the motherboard. So let's check the thermal capacitor. As you can see, we have 19 volt. Let's check the second one. We have 19 volt, as you can see. Here we have inductor. We should get 19 volt in both sides. As you can see, we get 19 volts in both sides, exactly as we have in the schematic. Now, if we go to this MOSFET Q1002, as you can see in the schematic, we should get 19 volt here in the source. As you can see, we have 19 volt in the source, okay, in three pins. And of course, let's check the gate. We have the control signal. This is the control signal. So we have the 19 volt in the source and the control signal. We should get 19 volt in the other side, in the drain. So let's check. Oops. We have zero volts. Means here we have the problem. This MOSFET is failed or we have a short circuit in this motherboard. We have two options. Maybe this MOSFET is failed, or we have a short circuit in the other side of MOSFET. So let's check it out. So, as you can see, I didn't find the same MOSFET with the same reference and I make just a bridge, as you can see, using a wire between the drain 
and do search just in order to troubleshoot and to find the problem. So I'm going to show you how to find the short circuit and how to solve it. So this is the inductors that we gonna use to detect the short circuit. As you can see, the inductor basically contain two terminals. We have L here. So the reference for inductor is L. As you can see, we have L. So this is another kind of inductor, as you can see. Here we have another type of inductor, S in the inductor, as you can see, L9. Okay. So please pay attention. Do not confuse between inductor and ceramic capacitor, as you can see. Those are ceramic capacitor, and this is inductor. So let's select first the continuity option in the multimeter. Let's check the first inductor. We get a ready. Let's check the second one. We get a ready. Let's check the fourth inductor. We get a ready and get. So let's check the fifth one. L5. Bingo. Here we have the short circuit. We detect the short circuit, as you can see. Around this inductor, as you can see, L5, we have the short circuit. Let's check L5 belong to which circuit? Here we go. We have L5 here. L5 belongs to 1.5 volt power rail. 1.5 volt switched power rail for EGP interface. So this power is for the graphic cards. We have C71. It's not connected. Here we have C1089. This could be the failed or the shortest component. And we have here Q1000. 34 the MOSFET. I'm going to show you how to detect the field component because the inductor is just a wire, it's not the shorted component. But around the inductor, there is a field component. So, for this inductor, for example, we don't have a short circuit here, we have here L6, as you can see. This is L6. Basically, these two inductors belong to the same circuit so we have l5 okay remember l5 and here we have l6 these two belongs to the same circuit i'm going to show you this inductors in the circuit diagram so let's find l5 in the circuit diagram here we go we have l5 here okay and here we have l6 as i told you before this is the circuit where we have the short circuit okay so here in this channel we have the short circuit as you can see we have l5 here so we found that this inductor is connected to the ground directly to the ground it means we have the short circuit here in this channel so as you can see this is l5 here okay we have l5 here we have l5 so Around this inductor, we have the shorted component that we should detect. Normally, the inductor should never ever be connected to the ground. Always inductors are connected to the power rail. Let's confirm the short circuit again. So here we have the ground, as you can see. This is the ground. And here we have L5 inductor that normally should be connected to the power rail not to the ground so if we check we get a zero in the multimeter means the power goes directly to the ground as you can see we confirm the short circuit but for this inductor the signal if we check it as you can see we get a reading this is a good reading we don't have a short circuit in the other channel so this capacitor c71 could be the failed component because it is connected to the ground. This also could be the shorter component, C1089, this electrolytic capacitor. So here we have Q1034, the MOSFET also connected to the ground here. Also, this is a probable cause of this failure. This capacitor, this also, and the MOSFET, one of these could be the shorter component. That's why we get a short circuit. So 
always when you get a short circuit you you should look for the component that are connected to the ground directly so we can see also that the IC also could be the shorter component you know why because also this IC tip is 51 124 is connected to the ground as you can see here we have the ground this is your line as you can see the control IC and here we have L5 and L6 this IC controls these two inductors so basically your line controls two channels it controls 1.8 volt channel and 1.5 volt channel but we get the short circuit just in one channel here not in the other means this IC could not be shorted because if it is shorted the both channel will be shorted means both inductors will be connected to the ground so the IC is not the shorted compound this is the shorted compound it could be the MOSFET or these two capacitors but we have another chunk here basically this power 1.5 volt is for what exactly it power which component in the motherboard let's go to the stable basically voltage rails as you can see where we have the power plane the description etc so let's look for 1.5 volt switch it and we have the v in means adapter power supply 90 volt it could be 20 volt but usually 90 volt so b plus when you find b plus in the schematic means the ac or battery power rail for power circuit so plus cpu core means the core voltage for the cpu or the processor and so on so for us we want to know about plus 1.5 volt switched s means switched so let's check the table again we have here plus 1.5 volt switched as you can see so 1.5 volt switched power rail for egp interface so advanced graphic parts this is for the graphic card so here we have on in state 0 and state 1 this 1.5 volt is on so we have s3 is 5 i'm going to show you in a separate videos this state and how you can use it in order to solve and to repair motherboards instantly so 1.5 volt is for the graphic card so let's go back to our circuit diagram so here basically 1.5 volt will goes directly to power the graphic card so let's see in the motherboard so as you can see here we have l5 our inductor l5 near to the graphic card this is the graphic card here as you can see near to it okay because the 5 volt comes from this inductor directly to the graphic card so the graphic card also could be the shorted component because if there is any short circuit in the graphic card we will get this inductor shorted because there is a direct connection between them so the probable cause of this short circuit are all components that are connected to l5 inductor in one side and to the ground in the other side like this ic for example it is connected to the ground in one side and to l5 in the other side the mosfet also as you can see okay and these two capacitors as you can see c1089 and c71 and of course here in this side as you can see the graphic card because this 1.5 volt is the power for the graphic card means the graphic card also could be the shorted component so all components that are connected to the ground in one side and to l5 inductor in the other side could be the shorted component so let's check the page where we have the graphic card here we go 
here we have the graphical circuit in page 20 so basically we should find here 1.5 volts as you can see we have plus 1.5 volts this is the power for the graphical here we have the tv controller the lvds controller the vga controller so this graphical could be also the shorted component here also as you can see we have 1.5 volt for pca as you can see pci express graphics i hope that you understand so the shorted component can be the ic the mosfet one of these two capacitors or the graphic cards okay because in this side we have the graphic card just follow with me we gonna detect the field component step by step so now i'm going to show you a trick that you can use to isolate the short circuit so we can remove for example the inductor we can remove it from the, the motherboard if we remove the inductor we will isolate the short circuit to just one side maybe this side or this side or even we can remove the pad okay we can remove the pad and isolate the short circuit we have here the first side where we have capacitors mosfet and ic or the other side where we have the graphic card because the pad is like a bridge it separates two circuits always the pads separates two circuits so let's see the pads here in the motherboard the pad tree as you can see here in the motherboard here we have l5 the inductor and here we have the pad tree okay so if you focus here you will see two sides as you can see two parts two different parts as you can see here and here we have a thin line isolation line between these two parts so if we remove this part we will get the short circuit just in one side so now as you can see we remove the part we isolate the short circuit as you can see so we isolate the short circuit to two parts this is the first part and this is the second part where we have the graphic card this is the shorted inductor let's check it in order to see whether we have the short circuit or not so let's put the black probe in the ground and check this inductor as you can see we get a reading so the short circuit is disappear in this inductor so let's check also this side also the short circuit is disappear here in the first side of the pad but the second side as you can see that is connected to the graphic card we have the short circuit we have zero in the multimeter so now we isolate the short circuit so to confirm let's check these two components this capacitor and the mosfet so here as you can see before these two components are shorted so let's check again now as you can see the short circuit is disappear in the capacitor let's check this mosfet also the short circuit is disappear means we successfully isolate the short circuit so let's check these inductors basically these inductors are connected to the graphic card as you can see we get the short circuit okay so these two inductors are connected to the graphic card so let's check this ceramic capacitors around the graphic card as you can see so we will find that all ceramic capacitors are shorted as you can see all ceramic capacitors are shorted to the ground because the graphic card is shorted but we don't know until now whether the graphic card is the shorted component or something around it it could be the ceramic capacitor around the graphic card if we check also the ceramic capacitors above the graphic card as you can see also shorted as you can see so we make sure that the short circuit belong to the graphic card or the north bridge circuit 
So let's check the table of continents. Let's go directly to the graphical circuit diagram. So here, as you can see, this is the whole circuit diagram where we have all circuits, as you can see. Here, for example, in page 5, we have DC and battery changer. Page 6, select and battery connector. System power, 3 volt, 5 volt. System power, 1.8 volt, 1.5 volt in page 8, and so on. So here, we have the CPU power VCC core in page 10. So let's look for the graphic card of the North Bridge. So as you can see here, we have the Karistoga. The model of this North Bridge or graphic card is Karistoga. Basically, the graphic card is integrated with the North Bridge. That's why we called it graphic card. So here in page 20 through page 24. So let's go directly to page 20. As you can see, we have here page 20. We have Karistoga dash one. Okay, this is just the first part, as you can see. So let's go directly to page 23, where we have the power, as you can see, the power part. Here we have the power, as you can see. This is the same graphic card, Calistoga or Northbridge. So this is basically the power, okay? If you focus here, you will find 1.5 volt everywhere in the schematic, as you can see, 1.5 volts. PCA, here we have another 1.5 volt that pass through this inductor, through this electrolytic capacitor and two cell capacitor. So any of these components could be the shortest component because all these components are connected to the ground. Here also we have plus 1.5 volt pass through this inductor also and through these two cell capacitors as you can see. These two cell capacitors also are connected to the ground. So when you have a short circuit, you should always check the components that are connected to the ground. Here also we have 1.5 volt pass through this inductor L7 and through this cell capacitors, as you can see, four cell capacitors, and then connected directly to the graphic card or North Bridge. Here we have another 1.5 volt, etc. So we have many voltages. Now the short circuit becomes difficult, but I'm going to show you how you can find it easily. To find the shortest compound, we should, as you can see, remove inductors. We remove these inductors one by one in order to isolate the short circuit. So let's check this inductor, as you can see. All these inductors, as you can see, connected to the ground. So, all inductors are connected to the ground. You know why? Because all inductors are on the same power rail, on 1.5 volt power rail. That's why all inductors will be automatically connected to the ground. So, to detect the short circuit, we should remove these inductors one by one and then check the component next to it okay if we remove many inductors and we find always that the short circuit is in the part where we have the graphic card means the graphic card is shorted itself okay so after removing many inductors i find always that the part where we have the North Bridge or the graphic card is the shorter component. That's why we should replace this graphic card in order to solve the problem.